boy, today's episode is, uh, well, it's an interesting one. Um, as you can see, I am in the Slocum, Hartford, Alabama area today. And I am going to tell you a story. The story of all stories about an alligator named Two-Toed Tom, a farmer, and his granddaughter who wound up being eaten by the alligator. It, uh, this is a, a crazy story, so uh, don't go anywhere. We're gonna jump right into it as soon as we get back from this intro. Yesterday, I was right across the state line into Florida and while I was there I, I heard an interesting story from a few locals. It took place right back across the line into Alabama. Well, that's where we are today. We are in the Slocum, Alabama and Hartford, Alabama area and right, right next to Esto, Florida where we were yesterday well this one's a completely different story from that and a wild one at that there are often times when the line between folklore and reality is just murky and you can't tell what's real and what's not real anymore today I am going to tell a story that probably stretches around that thin line between folklore and reality. Today I'm going to tell the story of Two-Eyed Tom and a farmer named Pap Haynes. This story goes all the way back to the 1900s and is about an alligator. All right. They say he was just no mere alligator. That he had an orange tint to him. Red eyes. They say he was 15 feet long and that he could flip a horse with his tail. That's how strong he was. Deep, right here, where we are, unfortunately, in the dense, stagnant swamps between Alabama and Florida. Sometime in the early 1900s, these stories started to circulate of this giant 15-foot alligator that was wreaking havoc on the swamps, the wildlife, and these small communities in this area. Contrary to most alligators who are shy and try to avoid humans, this one aggressively hunt, hunted the swamps for any sign of activity and began feeding on dogs and cats, mules, horses, and even people. So people began hunting this giant alligator and very quickly with these hunting parties, reports started coming in that they saw it and that they shot it but it was unfazed. Nothing happened. Now, the reason that this alligator was given the name Two-Toed Tom. At some point in Tom's life, he had gotten caught in a trap and simply just ripped part of his toes off to get away, only leaving him with two toes. So as these hunting parties are, are, are scouring through the swamps looking for him, they're searching for any sign of two-toed tracks very quickly because of that it's the the nickname two-toed tom started spreading and it, it stuck with him they were able to keep up with tom's path where he was going by the amount of cattle and dogs and cats and mules that were being eaten and left by the side of the swamp for their owners to find them they say, you know, he started wreaking havoc in Florala, Alabama, moved into Slocum, Hartsford area, and down into the Esto area, where he moved into a swamp on the property right next to a farmer named Pat Haynes. By this time, locals had all but waged war against Two-Toed Tom, and there was a hefty bounty put out for 
his death or his capture. This time period that they're they're hunting Two-Toed Tom and tracking him was about 20 years between him coming from up in Alabama down to the Esto, Florida area. So for 20 years, he was hunted by locals. He always managed to shrug off any efforts to harm him. And that's when Two-Toed Tom and Pat Haynes met. Pat was a livestock farmer who had over 40 acres of land, not far from where I'm standing right now. He had been told that Two-Toed Tom was in the area, but Pat chalked it up to folklore. Didn't believe he was real. Until one day, Pat found one of his mules ripped apart and blood tracks leading down this pond. In fact, there's a little turtle poking up right there. Now, Pat was furious that it had ate his mule. There was not much he could do about it. Two days passes by and Pat comes out to find yet another one of his mules just completely ripped apart and viscerated with another blood trail leading right down to this pond. Oh wow, look at that one fish right there. When Pat found the second mule, he wasn't gonna stand for it anymore. So he rode into town into the local market and with the help of his sons, Pap filled up 15 buckets full of syrup. He also placed sticks of dynamite down in those buckets. He began tossing them into the pond three at a time. He lit the fuse and it exploded, blowing up everything. Everything in the pond, water went pluming up into the sky. All the nearby trees around the pond were blown up. I mean, the amount of dynamite he used was to guarantee nothing in the pond survived. At that point, Pat was pretty satisfied that Two-Toed Tom would soon be floating belly up. So, he walks off and starts heading back up towards his farmhouse. When, to everyone's shock, they start hearing screaming. The screaming of a little child. They run back down to the pond here. Turns out, Pat Haynes, young granddaughter, had heard the explosion. His farmland was on the other side of this tree line. She had heard the explosions and she ran down to the pond to see what happened. Two-toed Tom had not died in the blast, but instead decided to grab Pat's granddaughter in retaliation. They made it back down to the pond area to see the red eyes of Two-toed Tom sinking under the bloodied water still frothing and splashing about it did not take long for pat to realize where all the blood had come from as they saw the corpse of pap's ripped apart granddaughter laying over here by this bush they later put two and two together that she had heard the explosion from over in the farmhouse ran down to see what was going on when she ran in to the vengeful red-eyed monster that had been causing, causing them so much. Pap would never get over the death of his granddaughter. He would spend the rest of his life out here looking for Two-Toed Tom so that he could get revenge for his granddaughter, which Two-Toed Tom had gotten revenge for Pap blowing up the pond and everything in it. Well, Pap never saw Two-Toed Tom again. You see, after Two-Toed Tom had eaten Pap's granddaughter from right here, when Pap and everybody went to mourn and tend to his granddaughter, Two-Toed Tom scurried off. It's dry now, but it, it used to be a drainage pipe and, and the swamp bled out this direction. Two-Toed Tom ran out this way, so the story says, moved further south into another pond, which was uh, located near the Alabama Florida Lumber Company. There were reports from tons and tons of people who actually saw him in a pond right near the lumber company. Apparently, he had fallen in love, so they say, with the whistle at the lumber factory. So when the whistle would go off, they say you, if you were standing outside, you could hear Tom grumbling over in the pond right across the way. Pap has now passed away, never ever seen Two-Toed Tom 
again since he ate his granddaughter. What a crazy, crazy story. That is all of it though. No one knows what happened to, to Two-Toed Tom. There's no telling. He could still be out there. Alligators live for seemingly ever. I want to thank you all for watching. I hope that you enjoyed this episode on the story of Two-Toed Tom. Thank you all. If you would like to help support the channel, as always, check out the links down in the description box below. I mean, it, it means a lot, and it helps us keep going. Thank you so much. I will see you tomorrow. I hope you all have a great day.